people of Reddit, what is a surprisingly unknown survival fact that everyone should know? You can squeeze relatively safe water out of moss. Obviously you should still boil it, and and it's going to have some dirt but it way better than drinking out of a steam or puddle. Edit, just to be clear you should always boil water, but if you can't for whatever reason moss water, stream. A lot of modern outdoorsy backpacks have whistles built into the clips on the straps across your chest. Not many people notice slash know about these. Save your voice whistle for help slash ward off animals. Mud all over your body keeps you from being eaten alive by insects. Just in case you're ever stranded in the bonnies. Plus immunity from predators in front vision. If you ever fall into freezing water and need to warm up fast. Don't rub your arms, I know it's instinctive to do so. Put your hands and arms near your core and heat up your chest first. That will keep you from going into hypothermic shock. If you are stranded in a desert with many cacti in the area, don't eat one right away, as some could be poisonous. Instead, cut it open and place a small amount on the inner part of your lower lip, and wait a few minutes to an hour. If it swells up or causes inflammation, don't eat it, because it will kill you. If it does do this, then there's a good chance it won't hurt you, if you eat it. Heard this from a cop friend. If somebody is ever trying to take you, or puts a gun or knife to you to get you away in a public place, you just got to start screaming and fighting. Even if you're shot or stabbed, at least medical attention can get to you relatively fast. If they manage to get you someplace private, your chances of rescue decrease. Maybe not super unknown, but a good survival tip to remember. Most times they expect you to just listen, because you're afraid of bodily harm. Once you're out of the public eye though they can do damn near whatever they want to you. You stop that by doing what they don't expect. Make a lot of noise, a lot of movement. Bring the attention of the public to you, and more importantly them. If there isn't anyone obviously there, that is an empty street at night, you're likely to get stabbed or shot and mugged on the spot, which is better, because you're in street view and not tucked into an alleyway where passersby won't see you. If there's a likelihood of witnesses they will probably run off, because it's better to be caught attempting to steal, rather than having stolen and or inflicted bodily harm slash murder. Since it's less serious they are more likely to get away with it. Rule of sevens. The amount of radiation present after a nuclear explosion decreases with every seven-fold increment of time after the first hour. After seven hours, radiation will be a tenth of what it was immediately after detonation. After 49 hours radiation will be a tenth of that amount and so on, providing the place you end up in still has its walls slash roof intact. Your best chance for survival is to make it as airtight as possible and wait. No amount of radiation is safe, but the longer you are able to stay, put before moving the better. When you finally leave, try to pick the calmest weather to move in. More wind present means more irradiated particles flying around. Cover yourself head to toe in as much gear as you can to limit exposure, and head in the opposite direction to the blast epicenter. When arriving at a more suitable location, remove all garments exposed to the element and either wash thoroughly, or bag and discard them. Wash your skin and hair as best as you are able. Radiation is nasty poop. And definitely something you want to be aware of if you manage to survive the hellfire and cyclonic wind. Also never use conditioner after exposure. It's a great way to make things 10x worse. Can I ask why? It helps the particles not only get practically glued to your hair and scalp, but it'll also attract more particles for the few days after applying. If you're waiting to turn across traffic, and there's traffic going around you, keep your damn wheels straight. If someone rams you from behind, you're going in the direction your wheels are pointing. If you're pointing straight, you'll just get shunted forward. If you've started turning, you're getting pushed into oncoming traffic. If you're sliding on ice, turn into the slide to correct it. Do not turn in the opposite direction of the slide, you'll start drifting. I didn't believe this until I started sliding to the right, and when I cranked my wheel to the right, my car magically corrected itself. It's called an inertia drift I think. This is true, but in my opinion the best advice to hammer into people is not to slam on the brakes, that will make things much worse. Modern stability control systems also do a pretty impressive job of correcting, within reason, as they are able to independently work all four brakes once they sense that the car is no longer pointing in the correct direction. 
Better than most drivers manage, anyway. When stabbed with a sharp object, don't try to take it out. Doing that might unplug a large blood vessel and significantly increase the bleeding. Leave it to the doctors. When you go into a building always look for your main exit and a backup exit. If you need to evacuate quickly you will know where to go and won't get lost in the herd. Stairwells, bank vaults, and freezers are safe places to be during a tornado if you can't get underground. All are better reinforced than other parts of a building and are typically what remains standing after a tornado. No sir, I'm not robbing the bank, I'm just hiding from the tornado. Shelter, fire, water, food prioritize in that order. Also the rule of three. You can survive for three minutes without air, oxygen, or in icy water. You can survive for three hours without shelter in a harsh environment, unless in icy water. You can survive for three days without water, if sheltered from a harsh environment. You can survive for three weeks without food, if you have water and shelter. Every military I'm familiar with teaches fire before shelter in the survival pattern. The reason largely has to do with signaling for help, but depending on terrain and time of year the warmth ties in very closely with the shelter. It also boils water and cooks food for safe consumption. Shelter should only prioritize over fire in the absolute harshest environments. Additionally, you've skipped first aid and signals. A good mnemonic is luck luck poop poop what the luck. 4. First aid. Fire. Signals. Shelter. Water. And. Food. A cotton ball mixed with Vaseline burns surprisingly well, and for a while too. Edit. Even works while wet. This one sounds like common knowledge, but there was an incident in my area of Australia a few years ago with some tourists picking up and cooking slash eating wild mushrooms. They didn't make it. So don't eat strange mushrooms if you don't know what they are, I guess. All mushrooms are edible. Some mushrooms are only edible once. Black bear attacks you? Always fight that punk. Go for the sensitive bits like the eyes and nose. Grizzly attacks you? Don't fight, you will lucking loose, it's a lucking grizzly, act dead. Grizzlies are known to leave dead animals for later consumption. It leaves, you get out to there. If it's brown, lay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's white, say goodnight. Although according to another post here that last part should read, if it's white throw some of your clothes at it, and run while it's busy inspecting the clothes, but that doesn't rhyme. 